In a separate lecture, you learned how to properly turn on and off all of the equipment in the studio. Today, we're going to focus only on the CD players. There are two different types, slightly by model. They're both essentially different versions of the same thing. The black units are a little bit newer than the silver units. The functions are essentially the same. Some of the buttons are in different positions, but the functions you need are found on both. The exact buttons, again, may be in slightly different positions. So, if you've used a CD player before, you probably know most of the main controls. The, what we call the transport controls, which are play, skip back, skip forward, stop, pause. There's also two other buttons, and on the black units, they can, and even on the silver units, they can be found more or less in this position. These are fast forward and rewind, more of a search mode. So as you're playing, you can search backwards or search forward. Some of these other buttons, we're not going to worry about, such as folder or title. We're also not going to worry about repeat random or the um, program direct. We are going to look at the time and we're going to look at the quick access buttons. The pitch buttons we'll talk about at some other time, but basically we want to make sure that pitch is always at zero. And if they are, if your music isn't sounding quite right, it's sounding a little fast or a little slow, just push those pitch buttons and make sure they're at zero. The time button will make sense once we load up a CD. You are only to open and close the trays by using the open and close buttons. Do not push the trays. Only use the button. CD will load up. It will tell you the number of tracks the amount of time on the entire album. It will also tell you that the pitch is zero, zero. And again, as long as the pitch is zero, zero, you never have to worry about it. Okay, so the random access buttons, since there are five tracks, if you push any of the buttons between one and five, it will automatically skip you to that track. Let's randomly select three. Now, it took a few seconds to search for it, and when it did, it automatically started playing it. Right now, it is counting, and it's telling you how much song time remains on that track. If you hit the time button, it will tell you what remains on the album. If you hit it again, it tells you the time that has elapsed. You always want to be looking at it from the time remaining of the track. It's not always clear what you're looking at. Counting up is always easy to find. But whether you're counting down on the track or on the remainder of the album can be a little bit difficult. Just know of the two times, the track will be the shorter of the times. The only time you would have to worry, and it's not even really anything to worry about, is if you were trying to time out the last track. The last track, remaining of the album, remaining of the song would be exactly the same. Once you've located the track you want to use, pause and reset the track by skipping backward. Because this is in the elapsed timer, all the numbers start at zero. If you push the timer once, it will tell you the remainder of the length of the song. Again, this is how you want to look at your timers. Time left, not time elapsed. These are professional machines, but they don't necessarily cue as tightly as uh, some of the other versions of these. Other machines have an actual button that will find not only just the beginning of the track, but will find the beginning of the song, what we call first modulation. These work more than good enough. Once you're done, 
with the CD player, please be sure to stop it, take the CD out, and again, only close it using the open close button. As a reminder, you do not turn any of this equipment on or off individually. You turn it off with the main power switch. And that's the lesson on the CD players.